Candy Fridays. I, it's good that I'm not doing Candy Fridays. I'm not really a candy person. I like M Ms. I'm totally opposite of my friend Betsy. <laughs> not a candy. Here, person. Here's a funny thing. Remember when Michaela would come to our house and Katie's not a candy person either. So Miss um, Betsy, Betsy is um, one of my very good friends, and our daughters are very best friends. But top it all off, <laughs> my daughter married her son. <laughs> That's right. But I always grew up, or I always grew up, Katie always grew up with Michaela at our house. Yeah. And so do you, do you remember what Katie would do? No. Oh, oh this oh. is the funniest her thing East, ever. Her, her Halloween candy. Her Halloween candy. That's right. She, okay. she wasn't a candy eater either. But what she did is she took a shoe box and she dumped all her candy into the shoe box for when mm -hmm. <laughs> Michaela would come over. Because Michaela's <laughs> like me. I like my candy. And she'd take that shoe box out and she's like, here you go, Michaela. <laughs> Michaela would eat it. We'll be right back. <laughs> Well, good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I'm Pastor, Pastor Kelly. Kelly. And uh, today we're going to morning scripture. We're going to pray every day. And we're talk talking about, about the author of this book. Well, I think we're talking about the book. <laughs> I speak Jesus. We're talking to the author of this book. And she's oh. going to be. And we've been sharing just out of chapter one. And we're continuing in chapter yes. one today. But we've shared the last two days about chapter one. Yes. About how your words are framing your future world. Yes. Yeah. And so today what we're going to talk about is there is no storm so big that you cannot overcome it with God's word in your mouth. Amen. Mm. And so we're going to jump in here. It's a couple scriptures, but it's James 3 three through five in the, in the NIV. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or ships, as an example, although they are so large and they're driven by winds, by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. And so today we're going to talk about that tiny little member of your body, but it, it makes such great boasts, and that is your tongue. You know, when you put a bit into the horse's mouth, that tiny little bit steers that, makes that horse go one way or the other way. And the same with, you think of these huge, I always think of like a cruise liner or something. Mm -hmm. Those rudders on the back of that ship, no matter what storm or what wave or what anything is, is before it, that those tiny little rudders steer that entire ship to go this way or to go that way. And the same, the word of God is saying, is as your tongue. Yeah, it's steering your whole when, life. It's steering your whole life. So let's say, you know, you're, you're upset with your husband and, and there's a lot going on and, you know, you can steer your marriage in the way that to a kingdom marriage, a, a beautiful marriage, just by the words that you speak. Instead of complaining or um, criticizing mm -hmm. or um, putting down pe our husband with our words, yeah. we, we start to lift them. You know, can I jump in? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to jump in the marriage boat. <laughs> you can in a second. But, you know, we wonder why we have problems. We wonder why we have drama. We wonder why we have issues. Maybe it starts with just by saying, I'm so blessed that my husband gets up and goes to work every day. Maybe he doesn't even get up and go to work every day. I'm so blessed. I'm calling things that are not as though they were. That's perfect. It all starts with the power of your words. Go ahead, jump in. Well, I was going to say what you just finally said is that <laughs> that like you, you know, so often in the world we're, we're taught, here's the problem, like we're taught to complain. And complaining is fun, right? It's the fruit of oh, your lips. Oh, describing is, a, a it's like problem you, is it's like, like oh, a piece it's so of great. cheesecake or like some kind of pie <laughs> oh, or something. Oh, I love it. Yeah. But uh, but then I stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> because you want to say, oh, the old ball and chain, uh, marriage is hard, and my wife, so she's on me, I tell you, you know, my husband, he's so lazy, he's for, so forgetful. And so we're just keep saying the wrong things, and then we're eating from that fruit, or we're steering our marriage towards, we're steering our spouse towards those things. Yeah. and. And that's exactly what the enemy wants yeah. you to do with your life, is he wants to steer you right into these storms and these crashes and these messes. But by instead saying, like God says, he speaks those things that are not as, as though, though they, they are. are. Yep. You're not lying. That's You're declaring right. a different future. That's right. So really, anything that you, everything, anything and everything that goes on in your life is impacted by the words that you speak. 
you have um, maybe a, a family drama or maybe you have, you know, an issue with health, with your health um, finances. I, you know, I think one of the biggest things that we have seen in our lives is just by speaking to our finances that we are blessed, that yeah. anything that our hands touch is yeah. blessed, that we're blessed going in, we're blessed coming out. You know, we've seen the hand of God. We've seen the power of God's words just by speaking. Oh, a million times over. It's true. The blessing over our finances. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but what do people most mostly say? Well, we're out of money. Well, we're out of money. Not sure if we're going to even be able to make more mortgage gonna... rent this week. Yep. Can't. I, yep. You know, I don't even have money for groceries, and and while the groceries are going up and the pay is going down, and inflation, we're going to be without. And we keep painting the wrong future as though we are under the confines or the authority structure of the world. Oh my gosh, it's so good. You're not. You're, you're not. not under those authority structures. You're under the kingdom, kingdom of God. Kingdom and the kingdom of principles tells us to speak differently. Yes. So I like what David said. Okay. So uh, David was always facing tough times, right? Mm -hmm. He was chased by the king. He was fighting Goliath. But after that, he was chased by the king and the whole entire king's army and entire nation's trying to, to kill David. Yeah. He's on the run. He went to war all the time. The Bible talks about how he would lead the charge into massive battles. Yeah. Mighty warrior. In other words, death would have been knocking on his door every day. Like, hey, you got battle tomorrow. You might die. You know, that fear of death would have been coming to him constantly. Mm -hmm. King's probably going to get you. You know, it's not that the, the fear doesn't try and come to you, but listen to how David deals with it. In Psalms 118 and verse 17, he says, I will live and not die, and I will tell what the Lord has done. That's good. When that fear would come, what is he? He's got a different way of talking. Yeah. I will live and not die. Yeah. I'm not going to die. Yeah. I'm going to live. And David, as a warrior, was showing us how to be set free from fear. He was showing us how. So maybe the doctor report comes and says, you know, you're going to be, uh, you're, you're dying. You're going to be dead in a year. What's your response? Well, you start getting your affairs in order. You start telling everyone, well, it looks like I'm dying. Mm -hmm. Why not fight instead? Mm -hmm. Why not say the words like David said? and go, I will live and not die, Ooh, and good. I will tell of what the Lord has done. Amen. That kind of confession is going to lead to a different kind mm -hmm. of life, mm -hmm. isn't it? I mean, I love it. Mm. Anyway, so, so this is the book. Yep, I Speak Jesus. So it's learning how to talk like Jesus talked. It is exactly that. Yeah. It's taking God's word, opening it up, finding out what situation are you going through in your life? The Bible has the words that you are to speak and they are life-giving words. And you can pick so, this up on? Amazon. You yep. just type in, I speak Jesus, and it pops right up. So, And we've been talking out of chapter one. There's a lot more chapters in here, so we yes. encourage you with that. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you and praise you, Lord, that you are giving us the right yes. words to say that you are empowering us and reminding us every time, Father, that discouraging words and complaining words want to come out of our mouth, that the Spirit is quick to remind us, nope, say the right thing. Speak truth and life into my future. In Jesus' name, that we would remember that. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, you can uh, go, what, uh, this is what I always well, we say, watch this clip, but I'm not going to say that today. Instead, I'm going to say, <laughs> wherever your church is, be in church. Thanks for watching. God bless you.